Now, within each element, or family of atoms, there can be different members, each one having the same number of protons, but differing in the number of neutrons. The total of an atom's protons and neutrons is its atomic weight. Thus, in natural uranium, we have U-234, U-235, and U-238. These different members of the same element or atom family, science calls isotopes. Returning to the nucleus, at this point there was still not much known about it, other than the fact that it was very small compared to the size of the atom, and that it was positively charged. In the same year that Bohr published his atomic model, an English chemist called Frederick Soddy and a Polish chemist called Kazimierz Fajans, both of whom were colleagues of Rutherford, independently discovered precisely how elements change after different types of nuclear decay. For instance, after emitting an alpha particle, an element is created with an atomic number that has reduced by 2 and a mass number that has reduced by 4 compared to the original element. After emitting a beta particle, an element is created with an atomic number that has increased by 1 while the mass number has remained unchanged. Soddy then went on to demonstrate how, with one alpha decay and two beta decays, you would end up with an element that has the same atomic number as the original element, but with a different mass number. These two forms of the same element would have identical chemical properties and would be very difficult to separate. When he told a family friend, Margaret Todd, about his research, she suggested the name isotope, which was Greek for at the same place in reference to how these different forms of the same element would appear in the same place as each other on the periodic table. Soddy liked the name and it stuck. He would later go on to win the Nobel Prize for his discovery of isotopes. Still in the same year, Thompson published a description of an interesting experiment whereby he passed a stream of neon ions through magnetic and electric fields and observed how they were deflected by placing photography paper in their path. Thompson was able to use these deflections to calculate the mass-to-charge ratios of the deflected particles. He explained this as follows. There can therefore, I think, be little doubt that what has been called neon is not a simple gas, but a mixture of two gases, one of which has an atomic weight about 20 and the other about 22. The parabola due to the heavier gas is always much fainter than that due to the lighter, so that probably the heavier gas forms only a small percentage of the mixture. A few years after Thompson's discoveries, another English chemist called Francis William Aston would develop Thompson's mass spectrograph experiment further into a technique that became known as mass spectrometry. Check out my video on mass spectrometry if you want to learn how all this would be done today. Aston used this technique to show that many other elements can also have different isotopes and eventually won the Nobel Prize for his work. He published mass spectrographs of different elements, including ones where you can also see the two isotopes of neon, just like Thompson had shown in his paper. So, since it was discovered that atoms of the same element can have different masses, this indicated that there was something more complicated going on in the nucleus.